So we'll start with a roll call attendance. Emma Cornwell. Here. Kathy Murray. Here. Kathy. Councillor Dubs. Here. Hi, Councillor. Sydney Meininger. Hi, Sydney. I saw you wave your hand. Jenna Perna Elias. Here. Hi, Jenna. And Rodney, I'm not seeing quite yet still. All right. Thank you all for being here. Um, we'll start with public comment. Not seeing any hands. Am I missing anybody? All right, well, thank you all for being here today. So we will proceed. Um, before we uh, jump into the approval of last month's minutes, I wanted to take a moment and thank Marilyn Clare. She resigned from the commission and we greatly appreciate all of her service and work and attention and effort, um, energy towards the commission. So thank you. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Um, and one other thank you is in order. Court Klein has filled in while Keith Benoit, ADA coordinator, was out for a few months. Um, so a big thank you, Court, to you for your time and your efforts with your, your words and your actions you have shown um, great consideration and respect to the commissioners and to the people that we are attempting to serve. So it's been wonderful to work with you and thank you so much for your all your effort. You're very welcome, thank you. Uh, so approval of minutes from November 18th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll uh, make a motion. I'll, I'll, I'll second that. I'll second Emma. <laughs> All right. So Emma Cornwell made a motion to approve the minutes, and Councillor Dubs seconded the motion. Is there any um, discussion? All right. So we'll do a roll call approval. Emma Cornwell? Yes, I approve. Kathy Murray? Yes. Councillor Dubs? Yes. Sydney Meininger? Approve. Thank you, Sydney. Jenna Perna Elias? Yes. And I approve as well. Um, so next up is the discussion. Uh, we have um, Director Lascalia here from the Department of Public Works and Director Mish here from Planning and Sustainability joining us to continue the conversation that we started last month about the complete street ordinance and possible um, edits to, to that. So I'm going to hand it over to the two of you. Thank you so much for being here today. Okay. Hi, good thanks afternoon. Thanks for having us. To everyone. Yeah, thanks for having us. Agreed. Um, Carolyn and I have um, worked on some uh, proposed edits to the Complete Streets Ordinance. I, I don't know if it's possible to get screen sharing for Carolyn, but she's got a working document that we could take a look at if um, we're able to make it so that she can share her screen. No, she should be able to now. Okay. okay. Thank you, Dave. Um, let me get the right one. Okay, do you see a blue line version of um, the policy? And also we can go over, um, I can certainly pull up the whole policy as it exists, because it's much bigger than this. These are just the sections that um, uh, Donna and I have been discussing in terms of um, slight modifications. Carolyn, could you zoom in just a little bit? Oh, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, we see it, but bigger would be helpful. Awesome. Thanks. How is that for anyone? Everyone? Is that okay? 
Thank you. So last month when we met, we talked about um, section A11 and section B1 specifically as being um, a little bit problematic for us as we uh, design and construct projects. So what Carol and I wanted to do was make kind of the least um, possible impact to the policy as written stay with the um, spirit behind the policy, um, but alter it in a way that would work for everybody. Um, so this is just a, a first draft attempt. And what we're trying to do is um, create an environment where we can have a uh, discussion, public discussion about our proposed projects and how we're gonna reconstruct roads and sidewalks. But what we don't want to do is put commissions in a position where they're um, voting um, sort of for things that have really significant financial impact. Those are um, sort of votes that would reside with the city council. But what we do want to do is use the Transportation Parking Commission and this commission as sounding boards to discuss our projects and why we've made the decisions that we've made and sort of what those impacts are and then to hear input from those commissions that can be brought back to city council. So if we start with section A11, it, what section A11 initially proposed is that um, we have to follow a, a very specific set of design criteria like we discussed last month, like you have to put, you know, concrete sidewalks on both sides of the street, and this is when and how you need to do it. Um, and if there's going to be an exception to that, it has to go to the Transportation Parking Commission, which has to vote to allow that exception. So what we've done is just altered this language somewhat to... Um, to say that we're going to be having a discussion at the Transportation Parking Commission, as well as a discussion at this commission. Um, so that was Councilor Dubbs um, last month had, had spoken um, about his support for that um, to kind of come to this commission as well. So that's um, the alteration of section A11. And then section B1, um, it is just a little bit of um, language cleanup um, to just make the zoning districts a little bit clearer um, and to also add in a requirement for crosswalks at each intersection where sidewalks are present on both sides of the road. Um, so that is uh, would be a, a, a very positive um, requirement uh, in our opinion. Um, and then the last piece that we've altered is the section on roundabouts. Um, so anytime we assess a four-way intersection um, or kind of a complex intersection where a lot of roadways come together, um, the ordinance requires that we look at the feasibility of installing a roundabout or a mini roundabout. Um, and again, puts the burden of approval of some treatment other than a roundabout um, on the Transportation Parking Commission, which again is sort of consistent with what was being suggested in Section A11. So uh, we are suggesting in Section B7 that there be a discussion on this at the Transportation and Parking Commission. Um, and, and we're not asking them to vote. Um, and it's just important to note, again, there are huge financial consequences um, to these decisions, um, you know, kind of installing a traffic signal versus installing a, a roundabout is, is a multi-million dollar decision um, that uh, is more uh, appropriate, um, likely for the city council. Um, so those are the alterations. And again, this is just a, a first pass. So we have to kind of start somewhere. Um, and this is what Carolyn and I have come up with. Carolyn, I don't know if you have anything else to add. Sure, yeah. And just to sort of follow on um, the heels of those um, last statements that Donna made, um, and you may have discussed this at the last meeting, um, is that this is really, um, th this um, 
is a codified policy. So in order to make any changes, this has to be officially introduced to city council and then it gets referred out to city council subcommittee. Um, and and um, likely, depending on what council um, recommends to um, the Transportation and Parking Commission. So this, this is the very first viewing of this draft language, but there's sort of this long procedural um, path that um, this will have to take. So this is not, you know, the last chance. And then, and in fact, you know, this would be officially, uh, officially require a public hearing. So um, I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and it's really, so um, in order to have these are sort of really um, minute details about how, you know, a policy setting, how um, different components to make safe, uh, treat streets safer for all users, not just um, um, focused on car use. And so um, adding um, clarification that we want to make sure that we're looking at in including some complete street elements when there's an opportunity. And um, that also sort of builds in flexibility because in some situations you can do one thing but not another. And um, so we wanna make it clear that the overall goal is to really drive towards um, creating a network of streets that really are safe for all the users in that network. Is it okay to uh, speak speak up at this point? Oh, absolutely. I think we're looking for you know questions and comments, and a lot of this is you know technical. So we're happy to answer those technical questions and sort of when they come into play or whatever questions you all have. I was wondering if if one of you could read the language because of all the the black and then the blue and then the strike through it um, is visually there's a lot going on so sure. so I'm wondering if um, one of you would be willing just to kind of slowly read the final language so that the commissioners can kind of hear that as well as see it and follow along if that would be sure I can do that um, so a 11 is under sort of the complete streets policies section. And um, there are a number of items under A, but overall the um, this section is the city's complete streets policy ensures that pedestrian, bicycle and transit safety facilities are fully integrated into a safe and efficient transportation system. Specifically, it is the city policy to Number 11, ensure the design and construction of all new reconstructed, reclaimed, including mill and overlay projects, incorporate appropriate traffic calming measures, accessibility improvements, and bicycle and pedestrian facilities. Mill and overlay projects include, and that's all existing language that I've just read. This is new language added. So mill and overlay projects shall include complete streets elements or element or elements such as bike lane and or sidewalks when geometrically and financially feasible, period. And so we would strike the terms when in the priority areas below um, because then there's, we've clarified some of that language below. Um, Design exceptions because of, and new language, either of these considerations, um, I'm sorry. So design exceptions when either of these considerations, meaning either geometrically or financially infeasible, um, shall be presented to the Transportation and Parking Commission and the Disabilities Commission for comment. 
So then we would strike the language that they should be only made, design exception should only be made when Transportation and Parking Commission approves it. So we're striking that piece and just saying that we're going to bring it back to the um, both TPC and Dis Disabilities Commission for comment. So that's part A. Part B, specific design criteria that should typically accompany complete streets in Northampton include the following. And these should be added when those streets are reconstructed. So this gets into the materials and how these complete streets elements are built. And there's a whole series of them. Um, so section one and seven are the only ones being proposed for modification. So um, in section one, cement concrete sidewalks on both sides of the streets in all business and industrial and mixed use and the urban residential C zoning districts when the right of way width allows cement or bituminous concrete sidewalks on at least one side of the street in all other districts within one mile of Florence Center, Northampton Central Business District, all K-12 schools, wherever a sidewalk would reduce the need for public school bus service along any new street in dense walkable neighborhoods and in areas with clear pedestrian desire lines that will result in a significant sidewalk utilization it's existing. In addition, we would add language, crosswalks shall be provided at each intersection where sidewalks are present on both sides of the street. Sidewalks are not expected in the most rural areas of the city, although gravel side paths and other trails may still be appropriate. And then section seven, this is about roundabouts only. Roundabouts, which are favored intersection treatment, except in the center of Florence and downtown, should be used instead of signals whenever possible. Roundabouts and mini roundabouts should be evaluated during the preliminary engineering analysis for all intersections being considered for significant reconstruction, realignment, signalization, and four-way stops. Adding new text here, selection of signalization in lieu of roundabouts shall be presented to the Transportation and Parking Commission. And then delete the existing language that says the Transportation and Parking Commission shall approve any decision to use signal, a signal instead of a roundabout. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot. Sure. Um, there's a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> um, could you scroll up to the first one again? Yep. Um, so I just want to be clear on the um, the sentence, the design exceptions, because of either of these considerations. Sorry, it yep. takes a while to shall be presented to the TPC and the Disability Commission for comment. So, um, so that is when bike lanes and sidewalks are not geometrically or financially feasible. So um, that would mean if there are no complete streets elements that are financially or geometrically feasible when a mill and overlay project is occurring. And so, um, so when I would- So possible. Right. And so to, just to be clear, this is, um, so um, there's a whole series of um, situations where, um, you can have the opportunity to include a complete streets element and a mill and overlay and, and Donna can correct me if I'm wrong, but mill and overlay is sort of the most straightforward or simplest um, improvement that you would do to a street. You're just um, taking the top layer of asphalt on the road, grinding it up, and then you're putting a brand new fresh top over it. And so it doesn't typically 
mean that you're planning anything outside of that street um, that that paved width. Um, so this design exception is just about those instances. And so what we're saying is in a normal situation, even when you're doing the most basic or simplest kind of street improvement, we should be as a city considering adding some kind of element to the network. So that might be a sidewalk, it might be a bike lane, it might be a curb extension, it could be any number of things. Um, but even in those simplest, most simplest situations, if it's infeasible because of the geometry of the layout or the cost, that's what would be a design exception that then should be discussed further with Transportation and Parking and the Disabilities Commission. Okay. And how would it be decided if a bike lane goes in or a sidewalk goes in, if there is space? Well, that's where it comes down to the engineering and and and, and that's sort of DPW's bailiwick. Like they're in charge of designing and maintaining all the streets for the city. And so in order to, you know, maintain and care for those, they have to have all the, you know, analysis and design and, and um, review of what the street is and what it can handle. And then I'll just hand it over to Donna because she can speak more to that. It, yeah, it really comes down to mathematics. So it's, it, you know, how wide is the existing space that we have to work with? If we're just doing a mill and overlay, like Carolyn said, we're coming in, we're not changing curb lines, because once you change curb lines, you have to change drainage. And that's when things become financially infeasible. There's huge expense associated with alteration of drainage. So when we're doing mill and overlay, we have a certain amount of street width to work with. And let's just say that street width is 25 feet. Within that 25 feet, we have to fit two travel lanes, a double yellow center line, which has dimension to it. We have to fit curbing, which also has dimension to it. Sometimes we fit in a fog line, which is the white line on the right-hand side of the road. Sometimes we don't have space for it or we don't install one depending on the application. So we have to sort of mathematically back into and back out of what can we actually fit in this space. We have certain dimensions that we have to hit for sidewalks and certain dimensions that we have to hit for a bike lane. So if we have a choice to install one or the other, if we say, okay, we'd really like to put a sidewalk in here because we have 60 inches, we now have to look at the grades because oftentimes we just don't have the topography to be able to install a sidewalk in, in a way that is financially feasible. We have a slope that is so steep that it might require a retaining wall or we have um, so many trees in the way that we would have to cut all of the trees down in order to stay within the right of way. So even though we have space, there could be trees that are occupying that space, or there could be fire hydrants that are occupying that space. So we have to think about what's in the way um, and, and can we move it or can we work around it? So it's really a case by case basis, but ultimately it boils down to how wide is the space we have to work with and what can we fit within that space? Thank you. That that makes sense. Um, I I um, just want to uh, put a little you know pin that um, I love how many people cycle in in Northampton and love that there's the the rail trail and that there are cycling lanes on many roads. Um, I don't want sidewalks to be overlooked in projects going forward and to have bike lanes kind of automatically prioritized. Um, so I just want I just want to voice that and um, you know I trust Donna, uh, sorry, Director Lascalia, that you will 
um, you know, go forward judiciously and thoughtfully. Um, but I, I just felt like I need to uh, verbalize that. Yeah, thank you. And I'll also add, I mean, there's there's quite a bit of accountability when we design projects. I think the days of car-centric design um, have ended and we have standards to which we design. I mean, some of our projects are funded by Chapter 90 money through the state. Um, and, and we have design standards that mimic Mass DOT standards. Um, so it's not like we'd sort of make, you know, a, a 13 foot travel lane and not put in a sidewalk if we could or not put in bicycle facilities if we could. I mean, there's there's a level of um, public input and process and city council comment and public comment on all of our projects that really creates an environment where we're held accountable for our decision making and it all needs to be able to be defensible. Um, so any decision we make around the roadway, you know, has to be able to be defended. And the defense is not like, well, you know, this is just what I decided to do. I mean, a defense is, you know, here's the mathematical reasoning behind what we did and why we did it. Or here's the, ge you know, the geometric design of this particular intersection. And this is why we altered it this way. So I, I think I am very careful to always be able to justify our design decisions um, in a way that uh, community members can understand. Yes, thank you. Um, and then, sorry, I, I have more questions, but uh, commissioners, feel free to unmute yourself and jump in as well with questions. Um, does the language in A11 allow DPW um, a faster timeline? So do you think that this gets at what we talked about last month, the constraints that you're currently under? I think what this does is it, it strikes a really nice balance between accountability for public works, irrespective of who the leadership of public works is, and community input um, in a way that keeps projects moving. Um, so I, I think that the way the ordinance is currently worded, um, it's December. Um, I would like to bid our mill and overlay projects for 2025 in March, which means I have to go to the Transportation and Parking Commission in January and I need to present design exceptions for the streets that we want to pave. Um, because I can't get sidewalks in on both sides of the road for many of the reasons that I just discussed. If TPC votes no on that, um, everything stops. Um, and, and now I can't put anything out to bid because we're sort of in violation of, of our ordinance. Um, so I think what this proposed revision does is it strikes a nice balance between public process, public input, um, but also allowing projects to move forward in a timely manner. It takes the approval away from uh, TPC and it switches it to a presentation to TPC and the Disability Commission, correct? Yes, and, and I think the idea when Carolyn and I came up with this language is we want to hear public input on the decisions, we want to be able to explain the decisions and then hear public input on that, which, you know, we may or may not be able to address depending on what the situation is, but we want to hear from people and where we're actually giving more opportunity for public comment with this revision um, than, than really has previously existed. The way I would handle this is I would bring um, all of our proposed mill and, pro mill and overlay projects to both commissions for comment in you know December or January, um, which would kind of keep us on track and give me time to incorporate those comments. Mm -hmm. That's great, thank you. Um, and then B one um, is seems Wait, sorry, oh, Amy, just to like keep it in the context. I did have a question about A eleven. Um, before we move on to B1. I was wondering if either of you could speak to um, 
why you included geometrically as well as financially feasible um, and like kind of what you mean by that. Yep. So, it, you know, the roadway has a particular geometry to it. it. We talk about roadway geometry in terms of like, well, how are things shaped? Um, you know, how does this intersecting street um, hit that street? And and what does that look like? And what does that mean when we're um, designing things? So um, one of the things that we have to think about, um, when we're installing a bike lane or when we're installing a sidewalk is, do we have space for this? Can the topography, um, of the way things intersect actually allow for a compliant sidewalk or a compliant bike lane, um, or compliant installation of whatever we're trying to install, um, so sometimes it's not just about money. It's about like, do the grades actually line up? Does the way the angle of the streets come together actually allow for this installation? So ultimately everything can be solved with money. Um, but, but there are often times where it's like, you know what, the way this intersection is configured, like it just can't work. Um, unless we were sort of to blow the whole thing up and now we're back to financially feasible. So rather than sort of pegging everything on, like we don't have the money, um, this was just a way of communicating that sometimes there's factors other than money um, that, that may be um, uh, compromising us. And I would just add that as part of geometry, um, it also relates to, um, the so there's within the road layout there's there's space um beyond just what you see is the paved um road and the curb and that's right of way and the right of way varies dramatically from place to place so maybe the width that the dpw has to work within um could potentially allow for a five foot sidewalk on one side, if there doesn't, if if one doesn't exist, in other situations, the right of way may not allow for anything to go, you know, beyond the edge of the curb without going into private property and requiring a taking, or even sometimes going into private property and the, a person's house is right there. So there's no way to fit, you know, uh, an improvement in because of that. And it's all dependent on the street segment, the location, sometimes the entire corridor. Thank you both. Commissioners, do you have any other questions or comments about A11? And just jump in if you do, because it's hard to see everyone with screen share. Okay, so B11, uh, sorry, B1. Um, so just to paraphrase um, and take it out of this language entirely. So concrete sidewalks, both sides of the street, um, kind of, I'm gonna just say downtown for an abbreviated version of that, um, when the width allows, and then either the cement or the word I can't pronounce. <laughs> a two minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, concrete sidewalks on at least one side of the street in these other districts. Um, and then crosswalks um, when there's an intersection where there are sidewalks on both sides of the street. So that seems straightforward to me. I don't have questions about that section. Other uh, commissioners, questions or comments on that part? So that language, just adding the on at least one side of the street really frees up um, DPW's ability to assess the situation and make the best decision for the, the city without being bogged down in approval. Um, uh, 
Yeah. And, and I think, sorry, just to jump in for a second, Amy, I, I just want to say, you know, we want to keep the spirit of this ordinance and, and keep it as robust as we possibly can, um, which is actually why we added in the section about crosswalks at each intersection, which is, um, it, you know, definitely an alteration from what's already there. So um, we actually want to keep this as, as beefed up as possible. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I mean, that's clear that uh, it's, it's threading the needle, right? It's keeping um, high quality, but not being bogged down in some of the, um, the processes. Uh, I'm curious, I don't quite understand why B7 is included, is coming to us. So if you could speak Well, that's, that. that's just really that these are all the changes that we're proposing. Okay. So we didn't want to, so it would go as a package to city council. Okay. And so we just wanted to make sure that we weren't, you know, just targeting a piece of it, but that you're seeing everything that we're proposing okay. as a change. Okay, thanks. And so B7 is about the roundabouts. So um, in some situations, a roundabout might not be uh, the best decision. And so this would be uh, signaling or lights in lieu of roundabouts. And that would be presented to the TPC rather than um, asking for approval from the TPC. Is that a, a fair summary? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this actually just happened on the Route 9 corridor by the high school. Um, we did uh, examine the feasibility of roundabouts um, at the intersection of Elm Street and North Elm and Elm Street and Woodlawn, um, and geometrically there is not space, um, and there is uh, parkland on uh, actually on both sides of Route 9, um, which we cannot cut into um, because it's, it's protected parkland. Um, so it is, it, it which is just not feasible um, to install roundabouts there, though it, that was something we looked at very closely. Um, but I did have to go to Transportation Parking Commission and ask them to vote on this um, to allow for a signalized intersection. Um, so again, just a, a very difficult uh, position to put the TPC um, in. Thank you. Um, other comments or questions from commissioners? Anything to clarify? Okay. Thank you. Um, commissioners, I'd love to hear how you all are feeling if you would like to, um, be able to sit with this or look at it again on your own um, and to be able to vote next month to have it go to city council or if folks are ready to vote today, um, whether we want it to go to these, um, these changes to go to city council. So I don't wanna rush people. Um, and so wondering how you're feeling. So if commissioners could pop in uh, and maybe we could take screen share off if folks are done looking at the text. Thanks. Councillor Dubs. Thank you. Oh, what's, yeah, thank you. Um, I just wanted, I guess, to make a quick comment. Um, I, well, I was happy to see the uh, an A11, the Disability Commission added to that, um, to the, um, where they, you know, coming to us for comment. Um, I felt like maybe the language was backtracked a little bit or uh, um, by not requiring approval um, from the commissions. Um, I guess personally, or at least, you know, as a city council member, I do appreciate um, hearing 
as much feedback as possible from the commissions and the committees. Um, so if, 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 for example, the Disability Commission disapproved of a project, I'd want to know that, um, you know, whether or not I'm on this commission. I, as, a, as a city council member, I'd want to know that. Um, <clears throat> so I guess I just feel like it's the, the language was weakened a little bit by saying that it won't require approval. And I guess maybe it doesn't need to require approval, but I feel like there could at least be a vote during these conversations to say whether we approve or not. And maybe it won't be a binding vote. You know, maybe the city council doesn't have to hear, doesn't have to listen to our suggestions, but it would still be nice, I think, for the council to know if, you know, there is there is an official approval or disapproval of a project. I guess that would be my my feedback. So that's a good point, Councillor. So you'd be looking for potentially like a non-binding recommendation. Is is that what you'd be suggesting? Yeah, like maybe um instead of like you know saying that uh, approval is required, it could just uh, something along. I don't know if I could think of the the language right now, but um something along the lines of that uh, we can we can we can talk about whether we approve it or not, and then the council can take that into consideration. Something like that. You know what I mean? Like for example, on the city services committee that I'm on, uh, when when people are appointed by the mayor, on the city services committee, we can we can make a declaration whether we approve of that appointment or not. But that doesn't mean that the city council has to listen to that declaration and and vote because we said that. You know, just because the city services disapproves of somebody doesn't mean that you know the rest of city council does, has to you know agree with that. But it's just helpful to know what count what people are thinking basically could i i think um i think it, just to clarify so the, the department of public works doesn't get approval from city council for doing projects there's a funding mechanism that's approval for that so i think um i would you know council is never in the driver's seat for whether a project goes forward or not because dpw just you know is is charged with taking care of the streets um so maybe the um so instead of setting up a um a vote or an approval maybe it's to um understand concerns that a committee might have and certainly if then the committee any committee can make can take a vote and say you know we voted um we raised X, Y, and Z concerns about this project, and th then it's noted. It's 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 you know um, it can move on to so if for example, um, department head you know DPW has to go to city council for authorization for you know a certain allotment of money, then the councilors can say in this one particular project, you know, what was the public process and what did you hear from that public process? And then those concerns can be elevated, but putting a stamp of approval carries a different connotation, I think. So it would be important probably not to put that in unless um, there really is, you know, a yes or no, <laughs> you know, um, jurisdictional, um, response then baked into that to that process which literally has financial ramifications which many boards don't have you know authorization to um yeah and i think i mean that's why we wrote in you know, shall be shall be presented to the disability commission and transportation parking commission for comment um, so it, it's sort of creating a public process for comments that could be, you know, sent to the mayor, sent to the DPW, but Carolyn's right. The, the funding mechanism for DPW is a bond authorization to pave. Um, so if we sort of play this out, if I go to city council and say, I would like to pave these five streets, um, and city council wants to take that money and do something else with it, the vote is no. Um, the council doesn't say, well, this is how we want you to pave these streets. You know, you're going to do the water line, you're going to do the drain line, like the, the sort of the specifics of how we do those streets. 
um, is an operational decision that, that's made at the DPW in compliance with the policies that we have to follow, um, including this one. Um, so I, I, I think that we are trying to thread a needle and say we want comments from these commissions, but it's very difficult to put the commission in a position where the decisions that are being made have significant financial consequence. Thank you. Um, Claudia Lefko, if you have a, a short comment, you may Thanks. join us. Thanks. Um, I have actually a question to follow up on this conversation um, and Jeremy's point and all these points. For instance, if the it does seem like you're taking some power away from the, the transportation and parking as well as the Disability Commission. So it, it's not a question, I think, of the public saying, oh, we don't like the way you're paving the street, but I think you've been hearing from the public about sidewalks, and Amy brought this up as well, especially in this idea of sidewalks versus the amount of money it costs for the bike infrastructure. And so people wanting to prioritize sidewalks. So I think what could come meaningfully from the committee would be com would be more than just, oh, well, we care about sidewalks, but this idea that they could impact what are the, because the sidewalk, the street improvement also kicks in sidewalk and other improvements under this plan. I don't know if I'm being exactly clear, but I guess I'm saying, you know, I think the public is trying to elevate sidewalks and walkability in the city. And does this change, do you think, speak to that? I mean, are, are we, and I'm curious, I see Alex is on it. I'm curious how city council feels because they have so much on their plate, but transportation and parking is very specific and disability about these issues. And it seems they can be uh, a stronger advocates or something like this. So thanks, thanks for taking my question. Thank you. And and so do you, what do you think? Do you think this is true that that these issues can bubble up more easily the the corollary projects the sidewalk or the bike lane or whatever if the public is has more uh more power in the situation or something i guess is my question so for me this is um see if I can gather my thoughts. Um, this is, you know, there's the, the crux of this is what we heard from Director Lascalia um, in detail last month. And so I hope um, commissioners remember that conversation that the whole reason this, um, we're here this evening discussing this is because of um, the concerns that she brought forward last month that the the way the policy is written is very cumbersome and slows down the process and um, can can get in the way of making the best financial decisions for the city. So it's this it, it's, a very lofty um, uh, ordinance, how it's written. So would we love concrete sidewalks on both sides of the street in the entire city? Absolutely, you know, people would love that, but we also wouldn't love our tax dollars to go up in accordance with the, the money that's required to do that. Right, so we have to also live in this reality. Um, and so for me, I see this, these proposed changes as um, kind of going partway in between from this super ideal to a more realistic, okay, so one side of the sidewalk makes more sense in these situations versus both sides of the sidewalk. And so uh, I believe we have charged DPW 
to make these decisions. We and don't have all the, the fine details and the information and the numbers to be able to make every single minute decision that DPW is making. And I don't want to be making those decisions. Director Lascalia, thank you for doing that work for us. I, it, it's, it's, it's not what, what I want to be doing and what I can do as a citizen without this, all the, the details and the knowledge. So I, I feel like the proposed changes allow for DPW to have that flexibility to assess the situation, to see what the budget is, and to come up with the best plan for the citizens in Northampton. And, and, and just to add to that, you know, I've got a pretty long list of mill and overlay streets um, for next year that needs to go out to bid in February or March um, in order to get a good bid price for the city. Um, as part of that mill and overlay project, I do have to ask for design exceptions because it is not feasible to put concrete sidewalks on both sides of the streets. But we will be addressing sidewalks on all of those streets that have sidewalks we will just not be able to address them to the extent called for in the ordinance. I will have to bring this to the Transportation and Parking Commission and my plan is to do that in January. If they vote no, the project stops um, because I have no mechanism to move that project forward. And that's sort of the high stakes that we're working under um, with this ordinance so uh, the way it's currently written. Um, and when I say it's not feasible um, to install sidewalks on both sides of the road, it's not feasible because I either have no space or I don't have budget for it and or some combination of both of those things. So these are kind of very difficult decisions um, and it's sort of a lot to put on the Transportation Parking Commission a better alternative is that I present the project to the Transportation Parking Commission who vets it and gives us comments about what they think should happen or you know, gives us their opinion on how we might be able to alter our plans. And we take feedback from the public all the time and we actually do alter our plans many times based on public comment. Um, but rather than creating a scenario where a $3 million project is going to grind to a halt over sort of a, a procedural um, vote that's enshrined in an ordinance, um, it, you know, that's definitely a scenario that, that could happen. And I don't think that's ideal for anyone. And now I've got 25 streets that can't get paved. And that's kind of a big deal. Um, so that just follows up on what Amy said. Um, obviously, nothing is going to um, happen this year. It would be my hope that we sort of work out these language changes over the next year, um, makes things easier for the future. Thoughts from other commissioners, please? Silence. I, Amy, to answer a question you asked a little while ago, I would either want to discuss it as a group more or wait to vote personally. Thanks for that input, Jenna. Other commissioners? Do you weigh in on wanting to vote now or discuss and vote next month, Sydney? I would say discuss more and then vote, but not today. 
Thank you. Does someone want to make a motion on that? Kathy? I guess since I got caught with my hand up at that moment, I can make the motion uh, to, um, I make a motion that we, um, um, table the discussion to a future meeting and discuss more before voting. Is that it? Um, could could we put it to the January meeting? Specifically, instead of just saying a future meeting? That's fine with me. <laughs> okay. So the motion is to have a discussion, follow-up discussion in our January meeting and vote whether we send the proposed changes to city council. Is that is that okay to paraphrase like that, Kathy? That sounds like the right motion, Amy. Okay. I'll second that motion. All right, so Kathy Mary made the motion and Councillor Dubs seconded. Um, so we'll take a vote on that, Emma Cornwell. Yeah, uh, yes, I agree with that motion. Kathy Neary? Yes. Councillor Dubs? Yes. Sydney Meininger? Yes. Jenna Perna Elias? Yes. And I will vote yes for that as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Director Lascalia and Director Mish for being here and for engaging in this conversation and for doing the, the work behind the scenes, working on the document and bringing that forward to us. So um, stay tuned. We will discuss this in our January meeting and take a vote at that time. Thank you. We'll see you next month. Take care. Thanks. Thank Happy you. Holidays. Thanks. You too, to both of you. All right. Next up is the report uh, from City Council from Commissioner and City Councilor Dubs. Thank you. Um, so I have an update on the, the wheelchair lift at 41 Strong Ave. Um, it's not, you know, it's not bad news, but it's not like great news either. But I, but you know, that's what we do here. We're, we, I update you whether it's like, you know, a good update or a bad update. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just read you the email that I got from the, the owner of the building. Apparently there are some delays happening, but it's not, it's like out of their, hands basically so uh, this has been an incredibly challenging and complex project largely due to the unique position where the lift is being installed uh, the three-sided enclosure configuration and the attachment requirements have made it particularly difficult to execute despite these challenges we've made significant progress most of the lift has been built wired and is in working condition however the company has safety concerns regarding the attachment of the custom brackets to the brick the initial brackets did not meet their expectations so they ordered custom L brackets. Unfortunately, those did, did not attach as intended. This will now be the third attempt to fabricate a new set of custom brackets with a focus on ensuring safety and stability. Uh, ensuring the safety of the end of, of, of the end users is our top priority. And this step is critical to meeting the state inspection requirements. We're almost at the finish line and I truly appreciate everyone's patience and understanding as we work through these final hurdles. So, just wanted to update people on that the wheelchair lift project 41 strong avenue it's still happening but it's not done yet which i told you before that it was done so i wanted to make make sure i corrected that that's all i have for now thanks thanks for that update hopefully those the third the third time will be the the charm, the charm. <laughs> yeah let's hope thank you um, okay, next up is follow up on the PSA, the public service announcement on snow shoveling. And so Sydney, Jenna, and I think Councillor Dubs have been working on that on our behalf. So turn it to you three. Yes, uh, we met up um, a few days ago and talked about the, the PSA. Um, Jenna, you want to maybe take over from here or it's up to you totally? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Um, I can, and then Sid, you can fill in yeah. anything that I miss. Okay. Um, we, in that meeting, we decided that not a whole lot of the script needs to be changed um, from the East Hampton one. 
So we're thinking that we could get that done pretty soon, like writing a new script um, and then just doing a voiceover. The footage is pretty good as well. Um, we were hoping to get as many different voices as possible because we thought that would kind of speak to like the idea that it's like a community effort to help community members. Um, so anyone here tonight who wants to be a part of that, that'd be cool. You can let us know um, and we can let obviously everyone know as we start actually recording. We also wanted to maybe this, like get that out for this winter, but film our own or like get some of our own footage um, to, for like a future one for maybe winter 2026. And we thought as maybe we get some, like as we do some of that filming, we can take some stills from that to make like social media posts that maybe like different Northampton social media pages could put up just as like reminders for people because we think that more people would look at a post than necessarily watch a video. So just like a way to get the message out a little bit more. And then we, I don't know, the idea of would the Disability Commission ever have a social media account was thrown out there. Um, but I don't know that anyone actually wants to take that on. So. I, I think that might be a Keith question. Um, Keith, would that be something that we'd be, we'd be like allowed to do or has any other commission ever done anything like that before? Like a social media? Not the no, commissions. I don't know. Um, I mean, uh, different departments have their own social media, mayor, planning office, you know, department of public health, things like that. But um, I'd have to check into that. I guess maybe if we put something together as the ADA coordinator, you could post it that way, right? Just like a city post or something like that? or. So, oh, yeah, we can do that all day long. And we have hundreds of people that subscribe. And when I have updates, um, I throw it either in the newsletter or in the social media. And generally, if planning office puts something on Facebook, mayors uh, will share it. So there is quite a, a range of people that's going to see it. Okay, cool. Yeah, that sounds cool. And that, that page already has a, a big audience. So uh, it makes sense to... Yeah. And, and the mayor's has more than planning office, obviously, but, you know. Right. I have a question. Sure, Claudia. Do you want kids to participate? Like we have kids from the neighborhood who walk to school who must care very much about the sidewalks. So are you interested in having children or you or not? In your I say we're interested in like getting as many people as possible, but also doing it as quickly as possible. So depending on the level of coordination that would take, we're not opposed to kids. Shall, I, definitely... shall I ask and send you a name or two or not? Sure. Okay, great. I think it's good. You know, it, it encourages them as well to be participants in city government <laughs> or decisions. Thanks. I'm going to do it. Thank you. Sid, was there anything from the meeting that we, Jeremy and I didn't cover that you wanted to? No, I think you covered everything. That sounds very cool. Cool. So what, what do you think our next steps would be then? Um, so put some tech, put the text together. Um, we, we, we went over the text of the, um, of the East Hampton PSA and pretty much like it's pretty, it's really good. Like it's really complete. And um, that's one thing we talked about is that it really doesn't need to be changed that much like, other than just like changing East Hampton to Northampton, basically. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I guess I would say that um, we're almost ready to do it. We just need some people to tell us that they want to be involved in being a voiceover on it. Sydney? Oh. Um. One thing I was wondering in the East Hampton logo, they had videos, they had like a logo. I was wondering if the commission had one. Not that I or know. Or if of. we just like used um like the city of Northampton's logo or something. Yeah. Yeah, that would yeah, cool. we don't have a display commission logo that would take some digital skills, but we do have the city logo and that's definitely, you can use that. Okay. 
Yeah, the city logo is a good idea. Mm -hmm. In case you all can't tell, in this meeting, we were very much so like ready to promote the Disability Commission. We were like, we need social media. We need a logo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have uh, not heard back yet from Northampton Open Media. So I don't know if anyone um, has a, a good way to connect with them because that I believe that's the next step. Is that correct? Going in there to record the the voice to go with, right? To do the audio, to put it with the video? Or no? Wait, sorry, say more. <laughs> um, I spoke with someone at Northampton Open Media last spring about supporting us with this project. Mm -hmm. And okay. they said, once we had the footage, we could go into their studio and record the voice and they would put it together. And I think like give us a zip drive or something and say, here you go, here it is, final product. That's my lay understanding. <laughs> That's so cool. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, sorry. Yes. No, no, no. Um, great. So um, would you like, I, I could maybe reach out if you'd like me to, to someone from Northampton Open Media? Is that what you're asking? Um, yeah, I just, I haven't had luck in the past three months when I reached out again to follow up and I called and emailed and, you know, they must have been busy or something. But anyway, I haven't heard back. So I don't know if anyone already has a connection with Northampton Open Media that they could just kind of pick up with someone there to continue this, or I'm happy to to reach out again. Um, um, I uh, I see somebody from them every time I'm at the council chambers because they record all of our meetings at the council chambers. Yeah. So next time I'm there, I could just ask somebody. Yep. If you if you'd like me to. That'd be great. Okay. Court, Court, I see your hand up. Yeah, I was going to say I'm I'm happy to reach out to Zach, who's the contact that we send the videos over to be posted on the government archives too, and and I can also reach out to Al and see who the appropriate person is and get the information to you, Jeremy and Amy and Emma, everybody. So Great, thank I'll, you. I'll do that. Yeah. All right. If you like. Thank you. Yeah. Let's let's do both avenues. And... Okay. Um, and then see see what happens. Because yeah. probably those two avenues will come together. <laughs> okay, thank you. And so you're looking for any commissioners who want to be a voice and do part of the recording? Should we maybe do a quick, like, uh, people could raise their hand or something if they want to do it or? Yeah. I'm happy to, or I'm happy to volunteer. Yep. I, I'd be happy to if you need more voices or want more voices. I'm... Who else is here? Kathy? Emma? Emma, is that a hand? Yeah, I would also do it. Awesome. And Sydney, I know you wanted to do it, right? There's only one person left here, I think, in, in, or in here right now. Kathy? I will if you need more voices. Oh, but okay. I just, but if you don't want to, I was just asking. No pressure. Uh, <laughs> All right. So um, then will one of you reach out to, to any of us about recording when the time comes in case behind the scenes, you know, between now and the next meeting, if uh, Councillor Dubs, if you in court make contact with people at open media um, and set anything up like a time or a day or time to record just let folks know yes i will do that thank you okay. awesome thank you so much for working on this of course that's going to be fantastic to have out there and i love the idea of little social media posts to put on the city's um, account to have that out as well, because I think a lot of people will see it that way as well. 
All right, anything else on that? All right, thank you. Um, other business not anticipated? All right, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Councillor Debs made a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? A second. Kathy Mary seconded, thank you. All right, so meeting is adjourned. It's 5.13.